I said five in the morning. I wake up to five for my yearnings. Yeah, and my mind is a warning. Greetings to my YouTube family. It's your girl Ava Allure and welcome back to my channel and welcome if it is your first time here. As you can see by the title today I'm going to be providing you guys with some very helpful and insightful tips about setting goals for the new year or just setting goals in general. I feel like I'm a visual learner and when I see something visually I'm just able to execute my plan so much better when I have you know just that visual aid I could put it into practice I have something to refer to and I get it together so on this channel y'all know we focus on healing and dealing baby so going into the new year y'all we are going to be prioritizing our healing and we are going to talk about how I set my 2023 goals I was actually in therapy and my therapist introduced to me the concept of the wheel of life y'all i'm gonna put all it on the screen right here so this is your visual aid y'all i created these slides um and hopefully they will help you and if you have any feedback i'm welcome to it in the comment section so when i used to think about setting goals i used to make very ambitious goals with very little planning and very little thought about how i'm going to execute them other than like i'm going to manifest this i'm going to work really hard to get this i didn't really have a plan of action of like you know like the steps i would take and this still isn't as technical as maybe a step-by-step -step plan but it definitely puts you on the right path to make sure that you're meeting goals quarterly kind of like you would do financially you have four financial quarters of the year if you are in college or high school you have four semesters of the year right is it four it's two semesters but like you have a midterm between every semester to kind of keep you on track take note to see what needs to be realigned what needs to be readjusted so here we go so y'all, I have my PowerPoint on my iPad. If I'm looking down at any point, I'm looking at my iPad. We have broken down the wheel of life into eight different categories. Compartmentalizing your thoughts sometimes can be so difficult. You can know like, okay, it's kind of like, I kind of just, um, the analogy I would use is sometimes you want to clean your whole entire house in one day, but sometimes it's really hard to get started if you don't know where to start, right? We're gonna compartmentalize our thoughts and our goals. So we've broken them down into eight categories, spirituality, money and finance, career and growth, health and fitness, fun and creation, family and friends, personal development, and partners and love. So those are the eight categories that I'm choosing to use. Remind you, this is your will of life or in the driver's seat of your life. So if you want to adjust your will of life, if you want to make adjustments, I can, if you even want me to email you like this Canva, um, this Canva breakdown so you could realign it to what you want, just let me know and we could do that. Second, after you compartmentalize your, your eight focal points in life, which you know, life is such a broad spectrum. Um, if you can't get it down to eight, do 10. Maybe you, you think about the bigger picture, so maybe you have four. It's totally up to you, compartmentalize those thoughts. Think about the things that really matter and think about the things that truly make you whole. And maybe if you're passionate and you have like a passion project and you feel like it deserves its own section, give it to yourself. So next what we're gonna do y'all is we are going to go through each section on a scale from one to 10. You are going to rate where you are as of today in that scale. So when I was rating myself, y'all, I give myself a lot of grace. I'm not really hard on myself with my grades because, you know, I would never look at anything in my life and give it under a five because I don't think any of my anything in my life, well, there's one section that is under a five, but we'll get to that. I didn't give anything under a five because I feel like if you're getting up every day and you're doing the work, give yourself credit for that. That's half of the job. I'm gonna go through mine. Um, for spirituality, remind you, I already did this with my therapist. So this is like a kind of a second one I made, but I did a more thorough in-depth one with my therapist that we use more clinical terms, just that kind of fit in with our, you know, sessions but you know this is also a generalized of how I feel um I thought about kind of just throwing fake numbers on here but I feel like maybe if I showed you guys where I was in my life as 27 years old you know maybe you could relate and maybe you know maybe feel like you're not alone on this journey I didn't give um I would consider anything under five me not getting up and doing anything about it like Zero is just not even thinking about it. One is maybe like, oh, it pops in my head every now and then. Five is probably like, oh, I got up one day this year and did something about it. 
and my scale right this is my scale and what i'm using as a reference point for spirituality i rated myself an eight i consider spirituality like my walk with christ as well as my relationship with myself and spirit so i give that about an eight i think i'm about an 80 percent you know a b minus any of my friends would describe me they would probably describe me as like you know like very conscious like I'm really on my spiritual stuff however there is so much room for improvement so I gave myself an eight for money and finance I gave myself a six um, money and finance in my opinion relates to the money I'm bringing in and how it's being allocated so what am I doing with my money how am I spending it the flow the energy that comes with my money am i speaking positively over my money so money and finance i gave myself about a six there's a lot of room for improvement we will get to that later more in our goal um, execution plan so career and growth i gave myself like a seven i feel like ever since i was in college i've been in sales i'm still in sales even when you think about it on a grander um side of life like even my content could technically fall under sales because we're working with Google AdSense, we're working with brands, I'm selling my brand to, you know, the consumer. So I definitely gave myself a seven because one, I want to pivot careers as far as my career goals. I don't want to be in sales anymore when it comes to my career career. Um, I want to kind of more pivot to something that is a little bit less customer facing and something more administrative or um, analytics. So that's kind of where I'm going with my career. As far as career and growth with YouTube as well, I feel like on this platform, I definitely able to allure. I'm working on making a name for myself. I'm working on getting things together, but there's still not a plan of action behind me forcing me into like the mid 8.59 range you know what I mean the seventh I mean the next thing on my list is health and fitness I gave myself a seven um, I feel like consciously I'm very conscious about the things I put into my body I don't drink alcohol anymore and if I do plan to indulge in it I do to plan to indulge in it at a low amount and very spaced out between each other um, I don't eat beef or pork the majority of the time you know, I'm just really conscious about the things I eat. Now, the reason why I gave myself a seven is because even though I'm so knowledgeable on health and wellness, I don't always apply that to my life. And a lot of my um, eating habits are emotional and physically, I'm just not getting up and going to work out. Working from home can be so consuming. Sometimes at the end of the day, leaving these four walls can be it, be, it can become it could become anxiety it could create anxiety like i really don't feel like doing that thing so that's why i gave myself a seven if y'all don't care you could definitely skip forward to the part in the video where we talk about what are we going to do with these numbers so for fun and recreation i gave myself an eight i feel like i do a pretty average job of making time for fun going on trips hanging out you know planning little things i feel like it's an eight because even though maybe compared to somebody else's life, it may look like my social life is kind of, you know, on the lower spectrum of things. That's how I would like it. I don't feel like I want to be indulging in more fun and more things. I actually pull out of more things. I have more opportunities than I take to go out and have fun. So do with that what you will. I gave myself for eight family and friends. Um, I also gave myself an eight. I feel like I'm very intentional about spending time with my family and my friends. And one thing about I one thing I know everyone can say in my life is that they know if they need me, I will be there and vice versa. I feel like the people that I've curated in my close space, family and friends wise, know that I will always be there for them and I all I also know that it's vice versa that I can reach out to them. I feel like it's room for improvement because um I feel like once I hit some other goals, I'll be able to be a better part of my community and give more. Um, and also receive more because sometimes receiving is a little difficult for me, but this is not the video for that, baby. So for personal development, I gave myself a 6.5. What I would consider personal development is would be like reading, meditation, um, meal prepping. I'm not really doing it like I would like to be. However, I'm buying the books. I'm buying the containers. I'm buying everything that I need. It's more like putting into action to see the results that I want to see. And the last one, I saved this one for last for a reason because 
it's one of those things that where people this may be your number one priority this is the least important thing to me on this list not that the other things were ranked more important to important but to me this is the least important factor in my life at the moment and that's partner and love so more of like the romantic love that you have in your life um for me that is not a priority at all i'm not closed off to it however i do feel like i have real big goals and real big standards for myself and i don't know i just don't have a desire right now in life to focus on that and if you're like me that is perfectly okay don't let society peer pressure you into feeling like um your worthiness and your purpose comes from a partnership which i do think god created us not to be alone and to be fruitful and all that great stuff it's a season in your life for everything so don't miss out on your now season worrying about a season later in your life so i gave that a big fat zero my therapist literally was asking me like do you want to work on them? i'm like no nah, like i'm really okay like i am really okay with that now that you've compartmentalized all your thoughts, all your feelings about the different sections in your life, the next thing that you need to know about setting goals is prioritizing them. So I would like you to pick your top three categories. Which top three categories mean the most to you? Which top three categories in the next year or in the next month? Um, I'm gearing this video towards 2023, but whether you're watching it in the future or the middle of the year, however it works, what are the top three things that you want to zone in, lock in on? So for my top three, I picked money and finances. These are no particular order. Money and finance, career and growth, and I couldn't narrow it down to three, so I actually picked personal development and health and fitness because I see those things, two things kind of going hand in hand for me. Once you pick your top three areas of improvement, the next thing you're going to do is look at the number you gave yourself. So for example, for money and finance, I gave myself a six. By the end of 2023, where would I like to be? I'd like to be at an eight. For career and growth, I did I'm at a seven. I'd like to be at an eight. So that's a little less ambitious, you know, just one jump. Y'all got to understand career, life path, all that is a lifelong journey. So even if you're at seven for four years, like you have your whole life to figure out your career. I think the priority for me would be more purpose and happiness. But you know, for some people it may not be. Some people may want to be at a 10 by the end of 2023. Personal development, I feel like I'm at a 6.5. I like to be at an eight. I feel like um, once you take care of yourself, everything else falls into alignment. And for fitness, I'm at a, in health, I'm at a seven. I like to be at an eight. And the reason why I kind of made that jump so small is because when I think of like optimal health and wellness for me and my scale is like veganism, alkaline. So I know to be at a 10, baby, I'm not really trying to be there by the end of 23. So I may not even be trying to be there at the end of a lifetime. I'm just trying to be like, you know, better at about a about an eight. So the next part of our goal setting process is we are going to break down our goals into quarterly goals. And it may look different. So I created two different examples to show you two different ways you could break your goals down into quarterly goals. So the first one I did was money and finance. We want to go from a six to an eight by the end of 2023. In order to do so in January, we start off at a six. By the first quarter of the year, which is March, we should be at a 6.5. Seven by six months, 7.5 by the ninth month, which is month, ninth month, which is September, and at eight by December of 2023. So create that timeline for all your goals. If you're going from a six to a seven, then March you should be at a 6.25. June you should be at a 6.5. March you should be at, I mean not March, September you should be at a 6.75 and December you would be at a 7. So you're just going to do quarterly goals every three months. You know, like I mentioned before, quarterly goals financially, um, even um, academic institutions use that quarterly check-in. It's just been proven effective in so many ways. 90 days is a good cycle to really, you know, get yourself in the habit of changing habits and also um, creating new patterns. So the next thing we're gonna do, you guys, is we are going to make it real for your girl or your boy or your non-binary. We respect all people on this channel, okay? By the end of 2023, 
if the goal is finances, so what are the things I'm looking at in my finances? So one of the things I would say is to pay off all my credit card debt. So the a good tool of measure, which it does not have to be this tool, please understand that everything I'm giving you is just a visual aid and an example. So you could kind of plug it and do your own th this Make it a thing for you, make it yours personalize it to who God created you to be. So by the end of 2023, I would want to pay off all my credit card debt. So every quarter, if I was to go by the financial, like, like a meter, every quarter I would need to pay off 25%. So for example, if you have $10,000 worth of credit card debt, by March you would pay off $2,500. But what that means when you're setting your goals is if you don't get to 2,500 by March, know that your goal is to get to 5,000 by June. So maybe it's time to crank it up a little bit. Maybe it's time to realign the budget, cut back on hair and nails. It's really time to make some adjustments. Also, your goal does not have to be so mathematically correct. You could have maybe four credit cards and they can all have different limits one could be 500 one could be a thousand one could be ten thousand maybe your goal is to pay off a credit card every quarter maybe you have one credit card maybe your goal is to not add expenses to your credit card let these goals be realistic for your lifestyle please while we love an ambitious goal and we are so capable of creating them this type of goal setting doesn't, I don't feel falls under the manifestation category um, as far as like, you know, drawing in an energy of abundance. This is more of the manifestation side of actually putting in the work. Something about just putting numbers to things make things a little bit more realistic and achievable in my mind. While I do know that what I could do in a year, God could do in a month, I just mind you these are just things to program your brain to put a picture to what you're trying to do so the second way I made it real for you as well a financial goal could be also to start practicing saving um, you could want to save a thousand dollars so the note that I left for myself is that every quarter I would evaluate my habits of saving and I'll challenge myself to get better every quarter so maybe in the first quarter of the year if you save $300 maybe your goal is to double that or maybe your goal is like I really saved every bonus check that I received or every incentive from my job now I want to start saving some of my incentive as well as my hourly or your base pay um, or from your side hustles or maybe I want to pick up DoorDash to supplement my income with saving y'all the 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 possibilities for this is limitless. This channel is dedicated to the healing. Sometimes healing doesn't look like a face mask and a body scrub. Sometimes healing looks like putting your life into perspective, shedding limiting beliefs of yourself, and really challenging yourself to obtain goals that you probably felt weren't attainable. I really hope these visual aids really provided you with something. I hope you took away like a real good strategy from this video. Until next time, think about those goals that you're gonna manifest in 2023. Peace. I'm in my mind what it gave me. Try to get by, but I'm burning. I mean, I'm my mind.